Hey family, Bomani Tamba here, and I'm jamming. I'm on Bonji Road, I'm almost back at my um, Max Tennis Stay Hotel, which is called um, Micklin Hotel. Our group didn't stay here, we stayed at MJ Grand, but uh, Micklin is a hotel I've been staying in since 2012. And if I need extended stay, I stayed here. And what you see right now, you gotta go, you know, I'm in a nice little area where they have these beautiful apartments, you know. Exceptional family. We'll be a jamming. One thing I love about here in Ghana and tropical West Africa is just all this beautiful. You got that coconut tree looking nice. And you got these beautiful apartments. Exceptionally wonderful. They go family exceptional. Let's put our money together, invest in some of these apartments so we can do some great business together. And what we're doing family, we're coming up on a place called Malcolm. Now you can probably easily say that this is the Walmart of Ghana. So I'm telling my brothers and sisters, hey, you know, these Indians are these other people who invested in this place, they did what they did. But what I love to see is us come together, put our money together, put our energy together, and build exceptional, incredible operations like what we're looking at. So yes, a busy street. And here, I love these palm trees right here. This is a cemetery right here. It's one of the specialized cemetery, I guess, for the rich people who just want to be buried uh, in a nice little place looking good. And when you walk around this area, just be careful you don't fall into a ditch. So, you may see me with a camera, but trust me, I'm looking because, you know, some of these, uh, not all of these drainage are closed. So this one is closed, but some are open and just have to be careful. Just being real with you and be open, focus. So this is Malcolm. Something similar to Walmart in America, but it's absolutely... It's definitely not Ghanaian owned. The person may have been born in Ghana, but you know what I mean? Be like some of the Lebanese and the Indians now, they're se first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, tenth generation. But you know, they still carry an allegiance to their people, which you know, I'm not mad at them. I would never knock the hustle. And yes, I've been over here shopping, so you know, <laughs> it's what it is. But I uh, just want to see the things that we can do as a people, especially the black people in America, how uh, we can come together and uh, once we're out in the rural areas, like I talk about the uh, Black Star Pan-African community in Jahaji, uh, we can build what we need to build. That way we can create a black city with black ownership, with black everything. You know, um, I have no issues with the international folks that do what they're doing. I don't knock the hustle because at the end of the day, if we don't do it, other people will do it. And, you know, much respect to them. But uh, I'm a competitor, you know. I grew up in Jamaica to where we compete from 
track and field, to soccer, to just compete for the, the only few jobs that are available in the country. So we are competitors. And I just want you to understand that uh, this is our last future hope in Africa, which is West Africa. So we got to get on the ball. So, you know, you know, let's connect together and let's talk about how we can do great things together as a people. You know, because we have to build a future for our children. I don't want my children or our children to be slaves in this modern day world for Indians, Chinese, Lebanese and these others. I want us to be black owners and black, build black ownership. I want us to, you know, to make our ancestors proud. Because that's what we're doing, family. We're building a vision of the future. And then this vision of the future is black power ownership, black cooperative economics. It's just, it's, I mean, this is real about it. That's it. There's no sugar coat in the situation. So as I'm looking at you, family, very serious. I'm not a person that jokes and play around. You know, I may, I may crack a smile, but there ain't nothing funny. You know, as I, as prodigy from a, you know, <laughs> prodigy would say, you know, you know, and, and and people who just look at the situation that this is not a clown show, you know. And I'm talking about prodigy, prodigy from my, my uh, <laughs> prodigy from Mob Deep. Uh, you know, rest in peace, brother. You know, I may crack a smile, but ain't a damn thing funny. So, you know, every once in a while we may clown around and joke and laugh and everything because, you know, it's all fun and games. But at the same time, too, this is our, the reality of our life and our future. It's like, are we going to enterprise? Are we going to compete? Or are we going to just let everybody else dictate the future of our life? Dictate the future of what and how things should be for us? And I, I just feel like that's unacceptable, you know? As someone that is a product of just uh, black power and a product of just, uh, you know, you know technology and business administration and a lot of wonderful things in my past career I'm, I take it serious and so just reach out family so we can connect and we can just talk about how we can work together to build an incredible future across West Africa to where we have that black power energy that we talk about in America so you know family just think about it because if everything else gets developed here by everybody else, what do we have? What are we going to offer our children? Serious business. So let's keep it exceptional, family. Let's keep it strong. Let's keep it, let's keep it real. Let's keep it to where we're going to make this happen. We're going to do this. Exceptional, exceptional. So family, the journey continues. And we just, uh, as you see, it's getting a little dark. Uh, we're almost back at our hotel. And, uh, you know, we're going to close it out. And we're going to start getting things organized, packed up and ready. Because all great journeys come to an end. And then we got to get back to work and put that work in. So you know, join me on some of these live streams that we're going to be... You know, we're going to be saying a whole lot of things. We're going to be spitting a whole lot of truth. And some people, your feelings are going to get hurt because I'm going to call some of you cowards out. You know, like I got a coward called RJ Mahdi. I'm coming for you, coward. You know, you don't scam any of my tour members and think we're cool after doing a video with me and making it seem like you're down with Africa for the Africans. I'm coming for you, boy.